Welcome to Hypo Brew. I'm Tom Brennan, and today I'm going to show you how I installed a flexible sight glass for my Kegel. One of the great things, actually, when it came across this flexible sight glass is one, it doesn't break, two, it's replaceable. How about that? Uh, and three, it actually is pretty easy to install, which I've come to find out, and you soon will too. That will happen right after the ska. Let's take a look at what you're going to need to install your flexible sight glass as far as hardware is concerned. First and foremost, you're going to need a Kegel to install your flexible sight glass, right? Pretty obvious, right? Uh, let's go to the sight glass. So you've got uh, two ports. This is one of them. They're identical. Uh, one goes up at the top and one goes on the bottom. So this is, this is the piece that's going to go inside your Kegel. There's a gasket for outside and then the elbow itself. The elbow has a barb here on the side, which is where you're going to put this hose clamp, and then you're going to use the uh, silicon tubing there. This is the part that's replaceable. Then you have some O-rings, which actually will, you can mark off gallons at a time. And these are, you know, you move them up and down, which is kind of cool. And they'll also stay in place as well, as long as you don't mess with it too much. We have a step bit here. You have to go about a half inch uh, step bit bit into your kegel. So uh, this actually comes in quite handy. You'll need a drill. I actually have a corded drill that works out pretty well for myself. I've done quite a number of holes in my uh, kegels, plural, with this, so this works out well. You will certainly need a pair of gloves. Trust me, it gets really hot when you're putting in your sight glass uh, ports uh, in your kegel, or even when you're drilling anything into your kegel, because this can get really, really hot. I have a screwdriver here, and then you can use some sandpaper, but I actually just use an angle grinder works out perfect for getting the burrs out of the holes. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is figure out where on your Kegel uh, do you want your ports. So what I did was actually take apart the port that came with it. And uh, so th this is what's gonna be sitting on the inside of the keg. So one thing to take into account when you're doing this, excuse the noise, is just feel inside your keg. You feel that there's a little bit of a curvature going on in the keg. So you, what you, you wanna do is you wanna have it right where the flat part of the keg is. Okay, that's gonna be the point where you wanna have it. And also keep in mind that you have to have this in the inside of the keg. So you wanna make sure that this lays flat. I've already predetermined that that's the bottom uh, part of the keg that's gonna not have a curvature on it. And that's gonna be the top. Now what I did to align these, so you just mark the bottom of the keg and then just took this piece of wood and lined it up. And then actually, there you go, uh, a flat surface would be helpful, <laughs> which this is not right now. Uh, and then I just kind of figure out that this is the point of the curvature in the keg that's going to go. Now, you want to have um, the highest and lowest point of the keg where you can't do this, because then that's going to mean that you're going to have more room to measure uh, your sight glass. All right, now that I've got everything all set up, I'm going to start drilling. Before you start drilling, a little bit of safety note here. I actually have some work gloves, long sleeve uh, shirt actually a jacket on it's actually pretty warm out but I'd rather have uh, a spark fly on this jacket than on uh, my arm I kind of like my arm the way it is what I like to do first is to just use a cordless drill with a, a small bit on it to kind of create a pilot hole it won't take too long or at least it shouldn't I also kind of straddle the keg like this Just something, just just enough for the step bit to get a to get a hold of, All right? And it actually makes it pretty accurate here. Now, what I'm going to do before I I'm actually going to stop filming because this step bit is pretty loud. But I want to let you know that when you're doing this, make sure if you have a leveler on your step bit, make sure the bubble is square or as square as you can make it before you start drilling. As I'm going along, I uh, was just trying to see if the little um, the port here would fit inside the hole because it should be about a half an inch something like that so I just dropped it in and it worked now I was telling you about gloves and using gloves these are brand new gloves and it got so hot around the hole that when I was doing this I don't know if you could see that it burnt some of the material on the edge of the glove 
because it was so hot when I was dropping this thing in, and that's where you see here, see how black and red? Right there, that's the dye from the glove. That's how hot this thing gets when you're drilling it. Now you'll notice, hopefully, it's very rigid. We're gonna clean that up in just a few moments here. It didn't take too long for me to use the step bit to get it in there. Okay, as you can see here, take, see if we can get it a little closer. See the little burrs there, metal burrs. Now you could take sandpaper and sand this down, and I've done this on uh, a couple of times. I've drilled holes in kegs, and um, it could take quite a while. But what I do is I've got a little um, grinder here, which will make a uh, very quick uh, work of all of the burrs that are on there. It'll take just a few seconds. Let me show you. A lot of sparks, gloves, long sleeve shirt. And before I was said you told you when I was drilling the holes that it was kind of loud and I didn't want to record it, but this is just way too cool looking for it not to be recorded. So here we go. Okay, now, take a quick look at that. Now you see that there are no more burrs on there. It may just wind up cleaning this up a little bit with a little bit of uh, with the grinder, but, so that's it. Take short work of that. Do this to the inside of the keg and also the outside of the keg as well. And then you're ready to put your ports in and put in the tubing. Just push this through. There's a kid across the street with a yard sale. <laughs> put the gasket on. Hey, entrepreneur is at his best, right? We've got the port here. I'm gonna, uh, or the elbow, I should say. Turn this on, and this is, this is the top port. I'm gonna want it facing down. Now we're gonna fit the tubing onto the two ports. Got the tubing that'll fit onto both sides of the ports here. Again, these ports have little barbs on them, which is kind of nice. It's gonna rough estimate what I'm gonna need. So, and, and usually what I do, I would recommend you. Um, Take a longer piece of hose than a shorter piece because if you do a shorter piece you're kind of screwed later on so simply fit the piece on the bottom and then i'm going to go right about here and simply just do a cut now when i did order this i actually ordered more than i should so this way next time if i when i need to replace this I actually have some already and raring to go so yeah so i've got a little bit too much here it's going to do a little trimming i'm going to try to make sure that it's straight All right, there we go. Looks pretty good. Before you do anything else and after you have this all set up, you're gonna take the O-rings that are here and you're gonna slip it onto the silicon uh, tubing you have. And it's gonna take a little bit of time to do this. Now, the kit that I got came with 15 O-rings and the kettle that I'm putting this on is only 13 and a half gallons because it's a European kettle. But what I may do, I'm, a, I'm gonna put on I'm gonna put on all the O-rings because afterwards I can actually choose to keep them on or leave them, take them off. Because this is, you know, it's not a permanent thing here. But I'm thinking what I may do, uh, maybe especially in the in the lower number of gallons, I may just do half gallons in here because uh, then I can measure, so if I'm doing a five gallon batch, I can measure, you know, I wanna put six and a half gallons of wort in there. I can kind of quickly know whether or not I have enough wort to, to get going. So I may do that, I'm not too sure, but again, because this is so flexible, no pun intended, I could take it off and I can, uh, you know, just take off the O-rings if, if need be. But the important thing is to do it before you're going to start putting the water in and doing your measurements because then you can get a little, kind of be weird afterwards because <laughs> you have a whole kettle full of water and you want to make sure that you don't want any of it spilling on the ground, especially if you're doing measurements for it. And it'd rather be water than wort later on, right? All right, so I'm almost done and we're going to cut and I'm going to show you the next step. Before we start measuring everything, it's going to put the hose on, obviously, because if you don't put this hose on, yes, it will leak. <laughs> so, fitting the tube around the barb, I've got a clamp, which looks like it needs to get loosened. What I actually have is just a screwdriver with, a, you know, with the, the nut, that not the nut, the attachments. You can put multiple attachments in there. The bits, thank you. That's all. Okay. 
actually just returned to his clamp. So, yeah. fit that in there. I mean, you could also use a flathead screwdriver. That'll work too. All right, got that all clamped on. Then we're gonna do the top one. I got my water all set here. I have a marking here for a half gallon and then a marking up top for a full gallon. Uh, that was weighed 8.36 pounds per gallon, room temperature water. Now I'm gonna fill it up. Fill up the kegel, that is. This is already filled up. You know what I mean. Okay, cut. You're probably not gonna get any kind of level on the first gallon of water you're putting in, depending on the, the width of your, of your kegel. Other thing to know too, what you wanna do is put your kegel on a flat surface because otherwise you're, um, it's gonna be off. So, so that was one gallon of water and I didn't even start to hit the, the sight glass. So let's try to fill up another gallon. All right, now this is the second kegel I've done with the sight glass. The first one I had uh, looked like three gallons was gonna be the mark. This is where you're gonna to start to see it on the sight glass. So this is the third gallon. And let's take a look. Yes, we do have contact. So. Let me so elegantly take this off my tripod here. The magic of the movies. Okay. Magic of YouTube. All right, so there's my point in the sight glass. See that? I'm gonna take my O-ring, bring it down to three, all right? And I'm gonna go to my next gallon. All right, everything's all filled up with water. As you can tell, I actually have two extra O-rings, which I'll take off, I'll just unscrew this um, and then take these two off. But I did manage to get up, up to here. What I did do, just because I know I'm going to forget, that's I marked this off as a three. So we know that, that first ring here with an arrow going up is three. This is four, five, and then I'm going to just continue on here. So there you have it, my flexible sight glass installation for my Kegel. Yeah, I think that this will work out fine for me because I am a little bit clumsy. I, if I had a glass sight glass, I'd probably wind up breaking it a number of times. This works out quite well for me to each his own, right? The whole process took me probably about an hour and a half to do everything, which isn't really a whole lot of time. But you'll definitely see some benefits for putting this on your Kegel.